You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome to Shelby County Schools Report. We're coming to you from the studios of Germantown High School Television on the Germantown High School campus. I'm Scarlett Simpson. And I'm Avery Moore. Each month we highlight various people, programs, and events making a difference in our school system. This month we'll introduce you to Principal Darla Young, who has opened her home and heart to more than 50 foster children. Parents will want to stay tuned for today's SCS Focus. Executive producer Allison Long is joined with Shelby County Schools Chief of Student Services, Gerald Darling, and Director of Safety and Security, Carolyn Jackson. They will discuss the district's recent National Safety Award recognition. Our School of the Month is Middle College High School for their unique approach to learning. Later, we take you from farm to school with an SCS program getting healthy, locally grown produce into our school cafeterias. And our SCS calendar closes the show. From stage to classroom and vice versa, Germantown High School's Billy Poland has spent nearly 25 years doing the two things he loves the most, teaching and acting. His passion to his crafts has paid off. Mr. Poland is a national award-winning teacher and award-winning playwright, and that's why he's our Teacher of the Month. I wish he says that Elias was killed in a place where three roads meet. And that's the story's going. You know, and she said, where, where? Oh, something at Focus, where the road extends to Delphi and Dorian. And then that's when he begins to almost lose it. Some people say I'm not the traditional English teacher, and I think that's a compliment. For 25 years, Billy Pullen has called Germantown High School home. During his time there, he's taught everything from speech and acting to debate and English. I have IB Junior English. I have four sections of that this year. And this year I also have a class in AP Language and Composition. And I have a class in Creative Writing. He's racked up multiple local, state, and national teaching awards. And while teaching is his career, it doesn't define him. Mr. Pullen is also a published playwright and actor. New Moon, an independent theater company, did Hamlet in February and I played uh, Polonius. Whoa, Mr. Pullen's nice passion for theater I'm and caught. literature bleeds into his lessons. The theater background, which I taught for quite a while before I taught English, uh, comes in handy. Mr. Pullen often uses his theater background in his classes, bringing characters and books to life through theater exercises. Wake up, Phoebe. Holden? Holden, when did you get home? I remember back when we were learning about Oedipus from our summer work, he was always in character about Oedipus and Jocasta. During Huck Finn, he'll read out some of the lines and he'll really, it shows that he's passionate about theater and English. This leads to a very lively classroom. You can just walk down the hall and hear his class going on and, and it's so lively and, and there's so much, so much going on in his classes and it's all because of his personality. And we're laughing and we're learning at the same time. The class seems to go by rather quickly. They're always talking about the weather. I wouldn't say it's a theme. And while students are having fun learning, Mr. Pullen is pulling the writer out of them. Phrase that you don't need, that's why you're putting it in commas. He has the ability of being able to uh, pull out the writing styles of his students and to see who actually has the ability to be a good writer. And then he motivates them and, and nurtures them. When you feel like they actually get something, whether it's a moment in literature, uh, whether you see their writing improve, uh, they finally get it. After 25 years, there's no stopping Mr. Pullen. Most people in my age range have retired. Uh, I'm not ready to do that because I still like it. And people say, if you still really love it, 
you might as well keep doing it. Reporting well, for Shelby County Schools Report, I'm and Scarlett I was Simpson. hoping that if it does go over, you need to go back and see if you can edit your quote. Darla Young is in her second year as principal of Haven View Middle School. While she is inspiring young minds inside the school, it's her work outside those walls that has been getting most of the attention lately. She's a foster mom and has fostered more than 50 kids. It's a master class in love, learning, and life in this month's Spaces of SES. I am a Whitehaven gal girl. Um, I still live in Whitehaven area. My parents' house has always been the children's house. We did that in high school. Everybody goes to my parents' house, and it's never a quiet house. I don't like quiet houses. So then after they started doing foster care, and then um, I bought a house in 2009, and I said, oh, this house is too big. So then by that time I said, oh, I'll just start with one. And then that one kind of led to two, and that two kind of led to three or four because some of them had children or they were pregnant with children. So that's how my numbers grew. And um, I've had it almost at least six to seven in the house at one time. She just want to be loved. She's just a baby. I think it's kind of crazy, but I think it's a great thing because it shows her passion and her commitment to the community. Don't eat your dinner. Uh -huh. You're not. Uh -huh. mm -mm. For a lot of kids, she is the parent that they may not have at home. What's wrong? Because you don't even look right. What's wrong? I have to teach it and be a parent both ways. So just to divide them two, no, because it's a parent teaching 24 hours a day. But you want to go to your locker in the morning and in the evening. She's going to bring everything with you. To me, it would be amazing to see how she does it all between all those children at home that need her attention and then all the children here that need her attention and then all the staff that needs her attention. It's just amazing that she can do all of that. I may get a phone call at 7 in the morning, I may get a phone call at 7 o'clock at night, and I may get one at midnight and say, we need a place for this child to come. And nine times out of 10, I say yes. You should stay awake for the next six hours. <laughs> then your mama can go to sleep. She's fostered over 50 plus children in the years that she's been doing that. So that again, that speaks to her heart and her love of children. And I will take the, the rough ones, the ones that just need somebody to know I'm still gonna love you and accept you for who you are, no matter what's told to me, whatever your background is, what you've been through, what you've been doing, it doesn't matter. We're, we're gonna figure this out. She's like a very loving person. And usually when you meet new people, they're hard to talk to. But when I met her, it was just like, she was like my second mom. She is very soft-spoken, but she means what she says, and she says what she means. Because the kids know when she says something, it's law. She is an amazing person. Far, by far, one of the best I've seen. I haven't did it by myself. I, I can never take all the credit for it. My colleagues have been like, so much support. Right, so we need that. She can only teach sixth grade, because she's a K through six. So it's been like a very big uh, collaborative uh, family thing. Fostering is an amazing opportunity, an amazing thing for somebody to do for the community because there's so many children that don't have a loving home and to be able to provide them with one. And listening with Ms. Young's stories about her foster children that she has had over the years has made me interested in becoming a foster parent myself. If you love children, you're going to want them around you every day and you're going to want to help them be better. And if they don't have anyone to do that, you're going to want to take their role to help them be better in life. We all care about kids, but that's that extra step. And, and it just lets you know that her heart is truly in the right place. There's always a gift in every child and every person. The thing is, we're just trying to find out what that gift is. And I can't take everybody home, and I know I'm crazy enough to take everybody home. And I can't do it, and it frustrates me because I can't take them. So it's not even about me. It's about helping this child succeed. Is He Dead? Written by Mark Twain. Adapted by David Ives. If you want to find out, is he dead? Call 755-7775 or visit www.ppp.org to reserve your tickets now. The show runs from October 26th to November 4th. Don't miss it. Hello and welcome to Cable Quiz. The academic Do you know how incredible it is to work at a TV station in high school? GHS TV is a student-run television station. There's so many things you can do here at GHS TV. You can be in front or behind the camera or both. You have that opportunity. There are no limits. We have 
sports and we have news and we have entertainment. So the students here get a well-rounded view of what it's like to be in the TV field. It's my life. It's what I want to do. From all of us here at GHS TV, thanks for starting your morning with us. For more information about the Kappa program, visit GHSKappa.com or call 755-7775. You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Now, here is GHS TV executive producer Allison Long with this month's SES Focus. Thank you, Scarlett. Every day we send our children to school, we expect them to be safe and secure. And there's good news. Shelby County Schools was recently recognized nationally for our security planning and performance. Chief of Student Services Gerald Darling and Carolyn Jackson, Director of Safety and Security, recently accepted the National School Safety Award from the School Safety Council, or Advisory Council. They join me now. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Now, as a parent teaching or sending a, a student to school, I want them to go and achieve good grades and to go every day. Uh, but if they don't feel safe in their school, then that's the first thing that needs to be addressed. So those good grades and high attendance rates can only be achieved if students feel comfortable in their classroom. Um, and it's your job to make sure that mm -hmm. happens. Let's talk about how you make sure that occurs. Well, we take that extremely serious. Uh, what we do, we make sure that we look at what will actually happen in a school, and we, we assign officers to that but we train the officers to what to look for on a yearly basis throughout the summer and so forth, and we upgrade that training. And make sure that they're professional, that they understand the area that they work in, the schools that they're working in, and what it takes to make that school safe. We look at what may occur in and around that community, and we address that, and we look at everything that occurs in each and every one of our schools on a weekly basis, and we we drill down to each of those issues to make sure that we're addressing them if something may come up later on in the week. Okay, and you talked about upgrading the training. What do you think are some specific improvements that you've made that led to recognition um, that you received? On a, let's say, like, you, like I said, on a yearly basis, we look at what we, we saw as a problem last year and we train specifically for that. We don't look at, we've, we've had positive years pretty much every year for the last seven years. Mm -hmm. And we look at what could possibly go wrong. We've had a decrease in fights and incidents and so forth, but we didn't just rest on that. We knew that some schools had more uh, issues and more community issues. So we went and addressed those students who could possibly uh, get into issues of fighting or, or disturbing classes and things like that. So we concentrate our training on making sure that we address those issues that may pop up. The good schools and the good children, we know they're going to be great and they're going to do well, but the ones that we may cause the problem, we focus our attention on that also. Okay. And there has been a decrease in fights and incidents within the schools, and that is attributed to your uh, more holistic approach. Can you tell us about that? Yes. When we, we look at it, we understand that there are issues. So we've, we've incorporated uh, addressing the behavior of our students, uh, increasing the counseling uh, initiatives that we have in the school, so forth, uh, behavior specialists, we've added the behavior specialists back into the schools when we had a significant amount of behavior specialists. Uh, maybe two or three years ago, we've increased that. And we're giving them training on dealing with issues that, that our students have as far as trauma training. We know if a student comes to school and he walks in and he doesn't say hello to anybody or whatever, they know to look uh, out for that student today. Something may have happened in the neighborhood. He may be being bullied or whatever. So we look at those kinds of things. They, they are taught to address those and to recognize those types of issues. You have a program also called SHAPE. Can you tell us about that? Sure. SHAPE is our schoolhouse adjustment program enterprise. It's a program designed to help our students that are first-time offenders 
that may commit a crime that are minor crimes that we consider, they have to agree and they sign a contract. The parents have to sign a contract. So in lieu of arrest, they go into this prevention program. The program is evidence-based and it's a curriculum train program. It trains them on um, conflict resolution, anger management. Um, it teaches them how to cope with things so that it won't happen again. So a student gets into a fight and it's considered a simple assault. That student don't go to jail. They sign an agreement, they fill out the paperwork, and it's a six week program after school they must complete that program. If they don't complete that program, then that charge will come back and they have to go to court on it. Okay, so in the next few years as we make our way toward 2025, what are some of your goals? Well, our goals right now, we're looking at not only to uh, improve overall school safety, but deal with the issues that cause our, our children to to act out, to have problems. So we're addressing it holistic now. And we, we're, we're just looking at this year's data already and we're, we're down from where we were last year in the first uh, month and two weeks of school. So what we are proposing and doing, what we're doing is working. Uh, we, we, we utilize best practices and research-based uh, practices to make sure that what we're doing is effective for the student population that we serve. So we're, we're excited about this year. Uh, we're, we're, we're pleased that the additional counselors that we're adding, the additional behavior specialists, the looking at the, the trauma uh, issues and, the, and addressing those issues that some of our students may have, and to make our schools safe. We want when you hear Shelby County Schools, we don't want the first thing to be thought of is the schools aren't safe for this. We want to think, well, this is, an, this is a school district that I want my child to go to. I would feel comfortable having my child attend these schools. So that's our goal for this year, and that's, our, that's what I've, our goal has been since we've been here. I just wanted to say we look for everything we can obtain, not just here locally, but throughout the U.S. and we seek grants to try to enhance our funding that we receive from the school district. And we were awarded this year with a $3.3 million grant to help us with school safety. And as a part of that grant, we're extending our arms, partnering with our law enforcement uh, agencies so that our children as they go to and from school, we have designated officers that are patrolling the neighborhoods, making sure that they are safe on their way home and back to school. Great. Well, it is important for our students to enjoy school, to mm -hmm. learn while mm -hmm. they're there, yes. and that's only possible if they feel safe. Yes. So thank you for what you're doing um, in order to make sure that all students and teachers and staff feel safe within Shelby County Schools. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Now we're going to Avery Moore with our School of the Month. Avery? Middle College High School has been ahead of the time since it first opened on the campus of Southwest Tennessee Community College. Since 1987, students at Middle College High School have been earning college credit at no cost. The dual enrollment concept is something that has gained popularity over the last decade. Its forward-thinking curriculum is why Middle College High School is our School of the Month. This had happened, and then we also see that same injustice, yeah, that's fine, in To Kill a Mockingbird. At Middle College High School, students are pulling double duty. High schoolers one day, college students the next. We have a lot harder time focusing on anything for extended period of time. Why? My favorite part of the dual enrollment program would probably have to be the setting of uh, being in the actual college class with a uh, college professor. The dual enrollment program began at MCHS in 1987 with a partnership with Southwest Tennessee Community College. 
In 2009, Christian Brothers University stepped in. And they have courses on the CBU campus that students can start taking in the 11th grade. So their full college catalog is open to our students. For the noble gas here, which one, which element is highest to the right? The focus on college begins freshman year. Students take college courses at the high school like English Comp and History. Then when they are juniors, they start attending CBU classes. Students are actually allowed to walk across um, the street to their campus and really engage with other college students in their coursework and in their learning. Because of this unique dual enrollment program through Christian Brothers University, Middle college students are able to graduate with up to two years of college credits. And I think that that's huge for our kids and for our city because it means that they're able to enter potentially as sophomores or juniors into college uh, and really help them financially. And that cuts a lot of costs because I'm only going to be in there for probably three years. So that definitely helps. Thanks to grants, there is no out-of-pocket expense for students. It is tuition, books, fees free. So all of our enrolled students, uh, we pick up the tab for everything that they're going to need for those classes. To get that extra leg up, it's, it's so hard now, like with the price of college and for students actually get, like being able to go to college to have that opportunity, this already gives you a monumental leg up. Middle college students may only be in high school. But when they are on the CBU campus, they are seen as college students. They're treated just like every undergraduate freshman that we have on campus. It just gives you a view of how college is really going to be and how professors expect uh, the classes to go and the students to have. Because it's got like the perfect segue, because you get an opportunity to be a college student, but you still have that support of your home school. That support extends to picking the right college senior year. We'll literally sit down and look at each student and kind of go through where do they want to go to college, where's their data right now, what's it looking like, uh, what scholarships have they gotten, which ones can we encourage them to apply to. Graduates say the individual attention helped them succeed after they left middle college. We have students who come back and tell us that their college experience is so much easier than their peers because of the foundation and the support that they received here at Middle College High School. Report for Shelby County Schools Report, I'm Avery Moore. You've heard of Farm to Table, but what about Farm to School? October is National Farm to School Month. SES's program aims to put healthy meals in cafeterias across the district, whether that means buying from a local farmer or starting a school garden. Pretty good. Shelby County Schools, I believe we have a total of 203 schools that are under the Nutrition Services umbrella, and we have 123 school gardens, a learning garden uh, for educational purposes to grow their own food. We're growing lots of fruits and vegetables. It's very healthy food for us, and we could eat it. I eat them. Ooh. Eat it. Farm to School was really focused on teaching kids what their food is and where it comes from. We're going to wait until next week to see which part. We plant, we take out things that we take out, we feed the plants once when they need to be fed, and we'll just watch, watch them grow. It's the most marvelous thing to watch a student pull out a carrot and say, can I eat that? I say, yeah, you can eat it. Go wash it off and eat it. I think that the kids are starting to realize that based on what you put in your body, determines how you feel throughout the day and one of the things we work with them on is if a plant doesn't get the nutrition that it needs it doesn't thrive and grow and become a healthy plant so just like your body if you feed it not good foods it's not going to grow healthy and strong it will help the kids eat healthier because we will grow healthier food and we will eat it probably in the cafeteria so it's there, it's just not necessarily as full as, as it would be if it was a local product. We really work uh, in our fresh fruits and vegetable program with local farmers, just because there's less um, requirements around fresh fruits and vegetable program, and it's easier for us to pull local product in. I just believe it's a, it's a, great, a great cause. I'm doing this as a retired person to support that cause, and because I believe in it so strongly. And if you don't expose the children to nourishing food, all they eat is tackies, all they eat is very really junk. So, and that's, a lot of kids are like that. So, 
you know, it's, it's an education for them to see where their food comes from and how it's grown. It's really based on how, how well we market it. Um, if we market it well and we're, we're present in the cafeteria on the days that we do those events, the kids really get excited and the kids find value in it. A lot of times what we've done in the past is we've had uh, fresh fruit and vegetable Fridays. So where we'll menu an item on Fridays and then we'll have a picture of the farmer and their product in the field as it's being served on the line that day. And the participation number's unbelievable just because the kids had grown the product and then, you know, the kids got the opportunity to eat it. Those spicy, yeah. She the skinny one. ones are spicy. They'll give us um, vitamins. Um, it will make us, like, be more healthier. And we don't want to eat, like, things that will make us sick. Because a little green tomatoes that you make soft families. When the kids grow their own vegetables or fruit, they become very possessive of what is happening to this. They want to come out, they want to make sure it's watered, uh, they want to make sure it's growing, they come with a measuring tape and they, they measure how it's growing, they become very attached to it. What the student is getting out of it would be, a, you know, a well-rounded view of the world. It might be hard while you're doing this, but it's really fun because, like, as time goes by, you don't even know what you're doing. And while you're doing it, you're having fun and learning. I think it is the future. Uh, I really do. How many kids, they're, they're glued to their, their little games and their TV, and they, they never have their hands in the dirt. So this is kind of a, the school uh, gardening programs are kind of a, a breaking ground as far as letting them get their hands in the dirt. And, you know, if only one out of, out of that class goes on and grows a garden, we've still got one. So, you know, it's a win-win situation for all of us. Now it's time to take a look at our Shelby County Schools calendar. Tuesday, October 17th, Shelby County Schools will celebrate the Hispanic Latino culture. The celebration will showcase student and community performances and parent resources. The event is at Hickory Ridge Middle School from 5 to 7 p.m. SCS Elementary Schools will join schools across the country to read for the record on Thursday, October 19th. This year's selected title is Quackers by Liz Wong. This is the 12th year for the event which celebrates literacy. And mark your calendars. There will be no school on November 10th due to Veterans Day. For a look at the entire Shelby County Schools calendar, visit us on the web at scsk12.org. Thank you for watching today's program. On behalf of everyone here at Germantown High School Television and Shelby County Schools, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time on Shelby County Schools Report.